Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my build of a Voron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus. It's a FormBot kit, and in today's segment, I'm going to work on putting together the printed bed. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, real quickly here on screen, I'm just going to page through the section for the heated bed. If we look through this quickly, we'll see it's actually not really that long a section. So we should be able to get done this fairly quickly. Unlike previous sections, I'm actually looking ahead now and trying to figure out how long things will take me. I think I pointed out in a previous video that I made the mistake of not realizing that the assembly guide, which is absolutely awesome, is over 250 pages. So I, I have a lot of steps to do still and a lot of work to do. If anybody has any questions or comments, please, please, please post them below or email me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I'm just gonna start off by going to my parts box and let's pull out the bed parts and let's see what we have. Now, as you can see, I have the plate here in front of us. Now I put a hard fit it all on here, but the plate, it has four holes in the back, two large, two small, and then in the front only has two holes. So the two holes in the front, now if you look, the top is where the holes are sunk. So when I screw in, the screw should be flush with the surface of the bed. Now the first thing I wanna do is work through getting the magnet on here. So let's take a look at the manual and then we'll look at the plate. As you can see, the first step's actually pretty simple. I'm just putting the magnet on. This is for the PEI sheet. So this goes on, magnet needs to go on the top. So let's look at this. The first thing I wanna do is take this out of the packaging and I'm gonna be careful with the whole thing. Now I'm gonna apologize. Just don't seem to have a big enough workspace here to show this well. My other workspace has the printer on it. So I'm just gonna basically show the back and I'm gonna work from back forward. Now the first step I wanna do is take my isopropyl alcohol and clean this sheet. So I'm just very carefully with my microfiber rag, an isopropyl, cleaning this. And the idea here is clean this so when I put the magnet on, it adheres really well. So that seems pretty good. Now, in order to do the magnet, let me away from the bed and then we'll take a look at that. I real quickly just place this magnet on here to make sure everything fits and looks okay. That's looking good. Now, here's how I do it. So I'm gonna start with the back of the magnet and I'm gonna peel down about an inch or two across the whole back. So I'm gonna as you can see, I have about an inch or two down, and I'm going to place, using my fingers, get this all lined up in the back. And then I'm going to press down here. Now, if I have a roller, I can use that or a piece of plastic. And then basically, I'm just going to use my fingers under here and just pull the plastic back. And as I'm pulling it, I'm smoothing the magnet down. Now I don't pull the plastic totally out. I just keep going a little bit at a time. That way I can get it good and I can also stop if there's a problem. I'm just gonna pull this out. And as you can see, I now have the magnet adhered. Now you might ask, what about these holes? I'll wind up poking little holes through the magnet here to get to the screws. Now, at first you might say, why not install it on the printer and then put the magnet over the screws? Reason why I don't do that, if I ever wanna take this bed off, I'm gonna to need to have access to those screws. So it's easier for me, I'll just poke little holes here for the screws that go through the magnet. And to be honest, that's 
when I did my Mercury One build, we did the same thing. Now, just to further test this, the PEI sheet sticks well, so that's looking good. I'm just pressing this down, so that feels pretty good. Now, for my next step, let's look at the manual. So I've placed the magnet, and on my next step, I'm going to put on the bottom heater sheet and basically the heating pad. So let me flip my plate over. So I have that flipped over on my desk. And again, what I'm going to do is let's clean this plate because so we have that magnet again and we want a good adhesion. Now, in this case, the heated bed does not go over the entire plate. It'll actually be here in the middle of the plate. So it'll sit where the screws are uncovered. Now, I think that's pretty clean. I'm actually gonna switch rags because that side really was dirty. Let me squirt it down again. And you can see there's some dirt on the rag here. So yeah, we definitely need to, this side, clean it a little better. Okay, so we have that clean. And now let's get the heated sheet and we'll see if we can place that. So as you can see here, I have the heated sheet and the way this is gonna work, as I mentioned previously, the four holes of the back and the sheet should go something like this with the wires pointed towards the back. And as I also mentioned, the sheet does not cover the whole bed. It basically needs to be placed about the center. Uh, I'm actually not going to measure this. I'm just gonna eyeball it in. I feel pretty comfortable with that. It's all right if it's not exactly centered, at least in my mind. So I'm gonna go with this and let's start pulling the uh, covering off the magnet and we'll get this applied. Now this is the same idea as previously. I do about an inch or two here uncovered. We put the wires going towards the back. I'm gonna stand up. Now, I wanna make sure I start this far enough back where I don't cover the holes in the front. So now I'm just grabbing the sheet here, plastic sheet covering the sticky part, and gently tugging that back to uncover more of the adhesive. And I'm not doing everything at once, I'm just doing a little bit at a time. So that way, again, if I mess up, I'm not having to try to do the whole sheet. I'm not sure I could get this off if I really wanted to. Okay, so I pulled the plastic off, adhesive is down. So right now I have the heated pad installed, wires going towards the back. Back is part of the plate with four holes. And I'm looking at the bottom of the plate right now. Now let's switch back over to our directions and it looks like we have a thermal fuse and that actually needs to be going into one of these little holes here. So let's take a look. Okay, so I've rearranged this on my screen a little bit. Right here is the fuse. And it's basically, I'm just gonna to need to install this in this hole here. Looks like no matter how I do this, this wire is going to be bent a little bit, but that's okay. So I need an M312 and a M3 washer. So let me find those and we'll get this screwed in. Okay, so I have my M3 screw and washer and the washer's on there. And I'm just going to go over here. And screw this in. And I want to be careful. I might actually have to go with a shorter screw. Sort of see. I don't think so because of the thickness of the fuse. So the fuse is screwed on there now, nice and simple. Now, reason why I crossed over here, I could have screwed it in this hole. 
is I'm just looking at the diagram here, bottom, and I'm just matching up exactly where they have it screwed. I know the Voron has, they've done a lot of tolerance stuff and a lot of stuff to optimize. Just in case this screw hole needs to be empty, I'd rather just, again, mimic everything. So I have my cords here on back. That's all installed. Let's take a look at the next step. And I just want to highlight another awesome feature of this kit. There are several wires that are for ground. And so it's a little confusing to me. I wasn't sure. And then I happen to notice all these dang things are labeled. And so this wire does not particularly look like the wire I have on screen. As I can see, it doesn't look like there's two wires coming off of that. So again, a little confusing. But then looking through the kit, here's two wires and that label not particularly helpful. Sorry, I'm having trouble getting it focused. But as you can see, this actually has that's a connection to the bed. So pretty awesome and handy. I'm just loving how everything here is labeled. Let me put all these wires back so I don't lose them. And then we'll install this one. So for the installation, I just need an M36 button head. So let's dig through the screws and find that. So I have my M36. I'm just going to take these wires. I'm going to look for the one, in my case, labeled bed. And that's going in this screw hole over here. Let's look at this bed. And I'll just screw this in. I'm not going to make that too tight. I'll let leave a little bit of play there so that way I can move this around depending on where I have to hook it to the frame. So let's take a look at our manual and see what we have next. Now for this next step, we're going to be, I guess, mounting the bed onto the plate. And it looks like we need some M3 T nuts. We need some M4 thumb nuts. And those M4 thumb nuts will be uh, spacers that are heat resistant. So that'll be heat resistance in between the heated plate and the actual frame. Ideally, none of our heat will be creeping into the frame. It'll stay in the plate, keep it nice and hot. So let me, before I switch over to my tripod to look at my printer, let's find these T-nuts and these thumb nuts. So we have those put aside. Now I've actually found my first difference in kit versus the directions. Now, as we can see in the directions right over here, it says I'm to use M4 thumb nuts as spacers. Go over here to kit, and I couldn't find those thumb nuts. But then I found these, which again are, are labeled really well. And hopefully you can read that, but it says isolation columns for print bed, substitutes, or M4 thumb nuts. So there's actually some substitute pieces for those thumb nuts. Again, they're well labeled. The only issue I had was these were with the electronics as opposed to in with the screws. So it took me a couple of minutes to dig through things and find them. And again, luckily, they're well labeled, so I was able to find them. But that's just something to note that they actually use these isolation columns instead of thumb nuts for the form by kit. So I have my T-nuts, my isolation columns. Let's switch over and go to the printer. Now, before I move the bed over, let me point out a couple features. Front, back, this hole here, and we're probably not gonna be able to see it on camera once I put the bed in. This hole is where I'll need to feed the wires from the bed down into what's going to be the electronics bay underneath. So, that hole, again, should be towards the back. Let's see how we have to install this. Now, it looks like we're going to have to measure from this line here, 25 millimeters back. And so if I look at this, I'm going to set my ruler right here on the side, and I'm gonna slip my T-nuts in. So what I'm gonna do is try to line that hole up with 25 millimeters here. 
the side. Now, let me go over here to the other side and I'll move my directions over. Maybe we can see it. And I'm just going to put my T nut in. Should be able to slide to the round. And then I'm just trying to line the hole up with the 25 millimeter line right here on my ruler. So that's actually looking okay right now. And let's look at what the spacing needs to be on the back. But from the look of things, I'm just going to need to do the same thing in the back, same distances. So I'm just going to lay this here and snap in these T nuts. And then basically, I'm just trying to line it up with the 25 millimeters. So let me do that and I'll come back. Okay, so I have the T nuts placed. Now I want to switch back over to my desk and I'm going to clean out the holes for the bed for the screws and then we'll start to get that mounted. Now what I'm doing is I just have these pair of tweezers. I'm just pushing these through the hole, sort of pushing down, and that'll mark, leave a little bit of a raised bump on the magnet. So I'm just leaving that little bit of raised bump. And you can barely see it here and here, but there's a little bit of a bump. Now what I'm doing is take my X-Acto knife, And just circling around the hole. And so I'm just carefully getting that hole cleaned out. And again, the reason why I'm doing it this way, and this is basically I'm doing this, is this how we did it on the um, on my Mercury one build. But the big thing here is I want to be able to take these screws out if I need to. And I don't wanna to have to dig through the magnet then. I'm just cleaning these holes out. Yes, I'm switching over to the bed. I have these M3 16s, which I'll use to screw in. And then I also have my bed spacers. So let's see if we can get this lined up. I think I did a half decent job measuring this. We'll, we'll sort of see. Now, as I mentioned, this is the back of the printer. So we're going to go back here. And the first things I'm going to do is before I start trying to screw anything in, I'm just going to feed these wires down underneath, sort of get them out of the way. So let's get those out of the way. And I'm not sure about the ground wire, but we'll stuff that well no we'll leave that out so i'm just going to slide the bed back here okay. now this is 25 millimeters now the back i can already see not 25 millimeters so i'm going to need to push those screws up so the back did not need to be 25 millimeters now looks like the best way to do this is I'm going to start with this corner here and let me get the correct driver in here and I'm going to set my spacer right here and let's do this let's put the spacers here for all these and I'll go back through and try to wind these up a little bit better. As you can see, the screw goes down here flush. Now I'm not tightening this too much. According to the directions, I really only want to tighten one corner a whole lot. The rest I want to leave loose for thermal expansion. I'm going to try to get this back corner in. And like I said, this is going to be a little bit difficult because of have to line up the T-nut. Okay, so I got the screws in. Now what I need to do is I'm just gonna page through the directions a little bit. I've run everything through the hole in the back, back here. So, and, and sort of push these down a little further. That's okay, so they're good. 
then what I can do is the front of the bed needs to be 38 millimeters from right here. So what I'm going to do is try to line this up. This is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, so basically what I'm going to try to do is just eyeball this. That's supposed to be 38 millimeters. I think that's about right. Now reading the directions, I need to tighten one bolt fully and then leave the others sort of loose. So I'm going to do this corner here. And I'm just tightening these a little bit. I think that's all right. So I have that installed. Let's see if we have any more steps. I think we might actually be done the bed today. So with our measurements done and the bed screwed in place, that step's actually complete. So we've completed installing the heated bed. That was actually pretty easy, with the exception being that we do have to make note that the columns were used instead of the thumb screws for that thermal expansion. You can actually see them here. So that's, again, trying to keep that heat on the bed away from the frame and because we don't need to heat the frame. Now, looking at our directions, our next chapter is working with the A and B drivers and idlers. So until next time, we'll start again and work on those A, B drivers and idlers. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.